हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल इट्स नॉट अ वेरी अनकॉमन सिचुएशन वेर we find that there is a subluxation in a patient on table so many times these patient uh, do not give proper history preoperatively and then when we start the surgery like in this case when i made the incision and then i started injecting viscoelastic now you can see that i can see the age of this crystalline lens and usually that means that there is some amount of subluxation the zonules are broken somewhere and we can know the extent of the subluxation when you start doing the rexis so i am doing capsule rexis using a forceps here and you will find that wherever the zonules are giving good counter traction you will not see much of the folds but the moment you enter the area where zonules are weak you can start seeing these folds so kind of you can map the extent of subluxation so as i go around this you can see now there is a good counter traction by the zonules so i can safely say that the inferior part uh, the zonules are good but in the superior probably around 4 o'clock hours uh, the zonules are broken and uh, now when i asked patient on table patient told that a couple of years back he had a trauma with a ball so obviously this is a post traumatic subluxation and now you can see the extent of subluxation here is probably around 4 o'clock hours now this is a case which can be managed by should be managed by any good anterior segment surgeon now uh, what i'm doing here is i'm pushing a little bit of methyl cellulose to make some space between the capsule and the cortex so that when i put ctr it helps in reducing the amount of cortex trapped by the ctr now here you can see that i'm having difficulty in putting this ctr in the bag the reason is that because i'm putting this ctr in the area of uh, subluxation so uh, probably i could have gone in a clockwise manner rather than the anti clockwise manner which i usually use being a right handed surgeon so finally i try to use a sinski hook my, in le my left hand so that i can put this ctr into the bag through the capsule rexis there and uh, now here somehow i could manage but you can see that the ctr has gone into the area of subluxation primarily and in these cases if you do that sometimes the ctr may just pop out of this the capsule rexis and go into the sulcus now uh, i'm carefully pushing this ctr slowly so that it doesn't pop up and i hope that i will achieve in the back ctr and now i'm going to use a forceps micro forceps to hold it just near the eyelet but not at the eyelet so that the eyelet can be held by the sinski and that's what i'm trying to do here but i lose the grip on this eyelet so i just wait i put some viscoelastic and then again i use the sinski to push this ctr and you can see that it is going into the bag by looking at the capsule rexis margin so luckily here the ctr didn't pop up pop out of the bag but uh, i would say uh, if i am given a, another chance i would put it in a clockwise manner so that it goes into the non subluxated area first now after i uh, put the ctr i realize that still there is little bit of tilt of the nucleus and that what uh, that is something you can see uh, through the uh, i pieces because it is in 3d and uh, so i decided that i will put these are mst capsular hooks these are the strongest which i have used so far and these capsular hooks you can see that the tips of these hooks extend till the equator of the bag so this support the bag really really well as compared to iris hooks and what what we are doing basically is that these are the artificial zonules which we are providing 
to the bag so during the surgery my thought process is that once you support the bag with strong capsular hooks the chances of further extending this zonular dialysis is less so whenever you are doing any in the bag maneuvers or whenever there is little bit of nudging of the nucleus in the bag it will not cause further damage of the zonules because these capsular hooks are going to give the strain to the bag to withstand that kind of you know push or pull on the bag but of course even if you put these capsular hooks you have to make sure that you do very very gentle feco good chopping no excessive you know uh, you know pressure on the bag even while chopping you can see i'm not stretching it excessively because i don't want any further damage of the zonules i don't want vitreous to prolapse if i push the nucleus downward when i'm trying to divide this nucleus so always uh, make sure that you are very gentle with the bag the zonules should not know that you are doing the feco emulsification that's the thought process you know it's like stealing the nucleus out of the bag without zonules coming to know and uh, as i go further i reduce the vacuum little bit for the last pieces because these are the cases where because the zonules are already damaged there are higher chance that the fluid might pass through the zonules into the vitreous uh, in the burger space and start pushing the posterior capsule anteriorly so at the end like when i go for the last piece i generally reduce the vacuum by 20 to 30% Here I am using Centurion Feco with active fluidics, so the anti-chamber maintenance is really good. But still, even if you this use this kind of machine, you need to make sure that the PC is not bulging at the end. So that's why you can see that uh, the importance of microscope having good retroillumination. Whenever I am going to take my Feco probe out, I am going to inject methyl cellulose or OVD so that there is no prolapse of the bag. because whenever there is prolapse of the bag the chances of vitreous prolapse are going to increase now i am going to do cortex removal at some places you can see the cortex is free that means it's not trapped by the ctr at some place like this part where i am struggling to get it out it's stuck under the ctr so i have to go transverse ways to pull it out and in the sub incisal again you can see that it's free it's not trapped by the ctr so the another option which i sometimes prefer particularly in cases which have more significant zonular dialysis say 6 clocas is that i don't put ctr first i put capsular hooks i remove the uh, nucleus uh, the cortex removal is easy when you are not put the ctr and then i decide whether i want to put the uh, you know keep the bag or and fix the bag to the sclera or i just want to remove the bag and to a scleral fixated aisle so if you use capsular hooks to begin with without ctr you have a option that if required you can just uh, remove the bag at the end and do a scleral fixated aisle or iris fixated aisle but here once we put the ctr we have committed that we want to preserve the bag so uh, you can see that last bit of the cortex trapped under the ctr you have to be very very gentle but patient so that uh, you take it out uh, you need little bit of time here because you cannot pull this cortex excessively sometimes you may pull the ctr along with it and cause more damage to the zonules so better to be a little bit patient here and sometimes it's okay that if a little bit of cortex stays stuck that's fine uh you can try to remove it when you do the visco wash and it usually if it is a very small chunk it will get absorbed in the post operative period may might have to do a little bit of more steroids so that's why the initial visco dissection sometimes helps in reducing this kind of trapped cortex so you can try to do it all around visco dissection and then put the ctr again ovd bss exchange there and now because the you can see the pc is uh, quite firm there bag appears okay with the ctr and the support of caps rook so i'm going to put the iol in the bag once i put the iol in the bag again here you can see how gently i am putting the iol haptics in the bag you have to be very careful at each and every step in these cases you cannot just push the iol 
very forcefully into the bag. And now I'm going to remove these capsule hooks and judge if the IOL appears stable in the bag. So if it is unstable, you will always see kind of a tilt on one side. And if that is happening, then we may have to fix the bag to this clearer. <coughs> now uh, I'm going to do a thorough OVD removal here. And as I do that, uh, I go under the IOL as well to remove the OVD from the bag. And at this point, you can see that little bit of posterior capsular bulge is there. And that's because of the zonules there getting hydrated through the zonules, the vitreous is getting hydrated. And here, uh, what, uh, you know, I was trying to avoid it happened. The, you can see that uh, I pulled the uh, vitreous through that transzonular space. So that vitreous, basically anterior hyloid, was lurking around in that area just behind uh, the lens there but so far because of the capsule hooks and ctr it was kind of uh, it was avoided uh, during the phaco emulsification but as soon as we removed the ovd and capsule hooks it prolapsed so what i'm going to do here is that it has you can see that it has prolapsed and gone into one of the incisions on the in the side port incision there now taking this vitreous out completely sometimes poses a challenge if we use the same incision because it's difficult to then cut it out completely and it may keep on prolapsing so what i'm going to do here is just make another incision just besides this primary incision primary side port which where the vitreous is already tapped so i want to make one more uh, incision just besides that I will be using it for the irrigation and then I'm going to make another small incision uh, besides the main incision so that I can approach this area of uh, vitreous prolapse very easily. You can see the port towards the endothelium that is anterior. Uh, the port probe is between the iris and the cornea and you can see that I have released the vitreous completely. Just watch again 4000 cut rate there 36 IOP so low IOP and uh, I'm using a uh, good vacuum with low flow rate there. And that this movement of uh, vitreous getting released and you can see the contour of the pupil is regained. This uh, you should see again and again. So that indicates that your you know, anterior chamber is now free of any vitreous. So even if we don't use say trams alone, we can be sure because of the pupillary contour that it's free of vitreous. Thank you so much and uh, there are so many tips in this uh, video that uh, you can learn from. Uh, do write in comment section what you learned from this video and you, can, you might be, have done it differently, you can mention that. Thank you.